Hello there everyone, this is Sneko Knight here, your UDA survival guide. We're going to be going over tips, tricks, and hints on how to survive Icarus solo. First off, we're going to deal with water. The first tip is, if you look at this, it, you guys uh, always wonder why you're constantly getting diarrhea and all that? Well, water sources have a varying levels ch of chances of getting dysteria. For example, this one has fishes in it, which means your chances are lower. As you can see, I drank perfectly fine. Now, if you go to a spot that has no life in it, your chances of getting diarrhea significantly boost. So it's highly recommended to check your water source before drinking. As you can see, fish. However, in the event that there's no life in the water, and you can't, uh, you don't want to risk getting diarrhea. The other option you can do is simply use your suit's filtering system. If you dive into the water like this and swim around, your water will gradually increase. And if you want to see that in action, I'll probably show it to you once I, uh, get do exert myself enough. Also, for most, uh, as for the weather in Icarus, it's up to you on what you want to do. Like, this weather right now simply just slows me down because it's hard rain. As for, uh, recommendation for survival, I highly recommend getting a pick. The sooner you get one of those, the sooner you can get oxide, and the sooner you can start uh, getting metals. There we go. I will not tell you how you to go about doing your experience, doing all that, and what to do with your experiences, but I do recommend hunting as that is the most efficient way of gaining experience. Just like um, anywhere. It's like you hunt on Earth, you hunt on any planet. Basically, hunting provides the most experience. I'm gonna go and harvest that real quick. The next tip is going to be dealing with uh, animals. Most animals tend to be, or actually I shouldn't say most, about 50% of them tend to be uh, docile. In other words, they won't attack you. The other 50% will. In other words, oh, like that. There's a fish that just where the hell are you at still? Are you not hungry? Here, let's... I don't think you're it. Huh. Anyways. best chance of killing animals is quietly and stealthily. One good shot to the head will usually put down most animals. There are a few exceptions, like the bears. They tend to have a lot of hit points, and they tend to uh, be able to hit you harder and faster. Alright, now 
there's three ways to deal with bears. The first one, if you're paying attention, is simply getting in the water. You get in a big pond like this, your chances of survival significantly go up. As long as you have the materials and stuff for it. What the hell? Oh, there you are. Thank you. Stupid fish. You do gotta be careful of fish as some of them can poison you. Although they are pretty much free food, as they will come up to you and they only take one strike to put down. Anyways, back to what I was explaining for survival guide tips. And just a disclaimer from the UDA, these uh, tips, tricks, hints, and helpful, helpful guide to surviving Icarus solo can and will change. They also are not 100% accurate. But, as of right now, this is the best information we can provide our Icarus Pioneers. So that you guys stop moving your brains out. And dying from it. Anyways, again, I get very distracted as there's a lot of information I will be throwing at you. This is pretty much part one of the guide, where I'm explaining to you the process of all these tricks and tips. Uh, activate. Drop that. Get some of that. I went ahead and got the basic setups for survival. In other words, bedroll, fire pit, a pick. An axe, a bow, a spear, a knife, and that's the basics needed to be able to survive. Also, the wind here, or the weather, seems to be highly active today. So, as I was saying with the bears, there's a few ways to deal with them. I told you the first one, which is getting in the water. It's pretty well guaranteed to be safe, so long as you're not fighting a bear, for example, in a spot like this. You swim around in the water, there's a high likelihood the bear will catch you and eat you. So, there are pros and cons to each method. The second method, this one is basically absolute emergency. For example, you stumble upon a bear and you go, oops, I'm going to die. If you pull out your pick, you run over one, two, you can cut in and notch, jump up, jump up, and there you go. You're safe from the bear. As long as you don't cut in a deep enough, uh, a a slope for the bear. If you just go pop, pop, jump up, jump up, you're pretty well safe and you can pelt the bear in the head with either a spear or a bow. This one is recommended to only do this in the event you triggered a bear. Another pro to this, or the con to this, is pretty much if you are not care if you don't do it fast enough or you run out of stamina, chances are you're dead. But if you do it right, you will take some damage, but you'll be able to get up to safety. The next one, which is actually not that well known from what I've been able to tell, so this one is actually the cons to this next method is time. I recommend crafting a pole. It doesn't matter if it's thatch or wood. It's 
up to you whatever resources you have at hand. I like wood because it tends to be stronger than that. And now you might be wondering why craft the pole? And well, the reason why is it built up like this. There we go. You can crouch and carefully walk up this pole without falling off, no matter how hard you try, because you're carefully walking up this. And you can stand on the edge right here and pelt the bears in the head with arrows, and they will drop down and die. This is personally the safest method to dispatching a bear as they are not going to be able to reach you you don't have to worry about finding a water source and you don't have to worry about uh, potentially finding water sources that are too small to fight in the second method you can pretty much do the same thing as this in other words cut a notch and stand up look at the bear shoot the bear However, the bear can dig a hole through the rocks because they're tough. This, they tend to sit under you trying to basically reach you. They don't actually attack you. So the con to this method is simply time. You can set these up all over the place if you want to, and as long as got them properly planted into the ground and you crouch and uh, walk up them you're pretty much guaranteed to be safe as long as the bear is not right on you so that's the three methods to dealing with the bear I'll put them into practice in part two but for now I'm just trying to get you guys acquainted and help you survive and maybe stop losing your friends in the process so you won't be alone. So, on to the next part. My recommendations to uh, getting a quick, efficient starting is to create a pick. This will allow you to get more stone, which will allow you to get to craft your axe. The axe will allow you to get wood and then from there you're pretty much on your way. If you uh, are in need of crafting items and trying to gain the fastest amount of experience, going for a bow will not only provide you food and the materials you need to continue to progress, it will also give you lots of experience. Also, I recommend getting a knife so you can skin. The other reason why I say to get a pick and for safety reasons I had my uh, guards and crew clear out this cave as there tends to be holy it came back okay never mind uh, they they respawn uh, I didn't know they respond so since I don't have any of my guards to clear out this place I have to deal with it myself if you're lucky shooting it in the face three times before it spits will usually put it down. There should be a couple more by the sounds of it. So I gotta get this ready. Where are you at? There should be one more of you. Maybe two. Oh, 
There you are. Also be careful of their spit as it works like a shotgun. I think that's all of them. But there could be one more. As you can see, caves are kind of deadly and a force to be reckoned with, so it's highly recommended to be careful. Drinking water from here could potentially give you dysteria, so drink at your own risk. I need to drop this over here so I can see. go. Let's grab this one. The reason why you want to get the pick or get iron is so that you can get the next pick. Uh, I don't think... Yeah, I didn't get it all. Got some iron. I'm gonna need a lot more than that, but that's just the start of it. We've got coal, which I'm gonna have to come back for. Now that I've showed you and told you how to deal with the bears, wolves are you can pretty much use the exact same methods with the wolves as you can with the bears. That's one thing that's nice about that. However, uh, wolves are, because their bodies are narrow, you're going to have to get closer to them. Which means the third option is not completely the safest. we are. Oh, got it all. I have to come back forward. Actually, did I grab all the iron out of here? Yep, okay. So all the iron's out. All that's left is coal, which uh, I'll need later, but I'm not experienced enough to deal with that. So, now, as I said earlier, you can um, get jump in the water and swim in it. And you will watch my water gauge fill up. Almost there. And ta-da! It's full. Because I used the suit's filtration system. Ooh. That is... Oop. Hello. this. Alrighty. There are other places on the map that you will be able to find, for example, uh, dead uh, water. So let's see what things great. Wolves usually, oh crud. 
you can usually uh, stab them in the head. Oops. And it will usually uh, kill them in a couple shots. experience. Now let's harvest these real quick. Oh, there's another one. There's a lot more tips that I'm currently missing, but I've showed you how to deal with the bears. I showed you how to deal with the wolves. Rocks are pretty much the oh crud. I'm gonna die if I don't get on here, as I just showed you with those with the wolves. This one is ooh, I see it. Uh, an animal I want to take down, and then you can shoot it. I can tell those are non-hostile, but I can easily go and test it out. Trash that. At least not. Okay, so they just need to be re-put in. So let's check out if a uh, buffalo is hostile or if it's uh... Hello there! Hello! Are you stuck? I think you're stuck! Ah! Okay, buffaloes are non-hostile. Which is good to know. Although boars, if they're around here, are hostile. Alright. Oh, right. In order to deal with wolves with this technique, you're going to have to build it slightly down. In other words, you're going to have to build it right here. Because right about here, pull out your spear, and then you can just stab, 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 stab. Although I recommend keeping materials on hand to uh, repair your stuff, as they will break rather quickly. Alright, that's, let's see, if we covered the deal with water. If you pay attention and explore your water source, in other words, check out your water source, make sure there's fish swimming in it. If there's no fish swimming in it, chances are you're going to get sick. If there is fish, your chances are significantly reduced. You still have a chance to get sick, but it's reduced. As you see right there, didn't really get sick. Most people would have gotten sick from drinking from other water sources. Bears, this is the most optimal method to dispatching bears. If you see them. Jumping on a rock, if you accidentally get caught, if there's no water, 
is the second best option. Because you can go boing, boing, if you have the stamina. If you got water around you big enough, that is the first safest option in the event you catch a bear by surprise or you get surprised by a bear. Wolves, same thing. Now, most of you don't realize this, but uh, Icarus, our system, runs on a risk and reward. You do not have to build a base every single mission we send you on. You can just simply build a little rock hut, place down a bed, a fire, call it good, and complete your mission. It's up to you on how prepared you want to be. Some of these missions you don't even, you don't have to go overboard with. For some of them, it's highly recommended to actually build a base and go to town with trying to survive. So, what other things am I missing? We got taking care of the animals, we got taking care of uh, the water, those are the major things that people tend to have a problem with. Alrighty, what else? Uh, for your skills and stuff, we will not tell you what to specialize in. We will just simply recommend that, or the EDA here will simply recommend their op opinion on what one one opinion on uh, helping you survive significantly better. So, our my opinion as one of the uh, EDA representatives is simply place into resources. I recommend getting wood breakdown as that gives you the ability to turn wood into sticks. That will be very helpful in crafting a bunch of things including crafting arrows. As for that, we recommend getting the choosing the oxygen thief, as that will help you get more oxygen uh, oxide from rocks, the ox the oxide rocks, which will help you survive better in the long run. As and we also recommend getting the metal miner, as this will help you get more uh, iron which will be one of the most important resources to get in order to help you survive. That's for the resources we recommend. For construction, we highly recommend going for all the pickaxe options or skills or talents, whatever you want to call them. In other words, we recommend to train your ability to build pickaxes. And we recommend you to train your ability to spot uh, oxide you might have missed. We also recommend learning how to properly store things and properly use materials. As the more you use materials properly, the less likely you're going to have to you, um, spend gathering more to deal with your building. As for the guide, part one guide, this may not be the most optimal guide for most of you, but for those of you who are having trouble, maybe this will be a significantly help to you. Hopefully, it will this provided uh, tips that you can use.
this, which uh, apparently expires. Alright, that's probably going to have the creatures back pretty soon. And as for the tech, or as for your ability to make things, we recommend getting a wood beam of your choice. We recommend getting bandages, maybe even a suture kit depending on your luck. And we recommend getting a bow and an arrow and a spear and a knife. Now, and a uh, fire pit and uh, bedroll. Now, in the order we recommend it will be bow, arrow, and a beam. That will be your first three points. After that, it's your choice in what order you want to get everything else. You can skip most of the wood and most of the thatched building, as you can see right here. You can skip most of the armor. We don't recommend getting this as it tends to leak. Everything else is pretty much something you want to get at some point. This, it's up to you to get this, whether you want, uh, depending on how much, how bad your luck is. You definitely want to get a furnace. You're going to definitely need an iron axe, iron pick, and yeah, at least those for the beginning. You're going to need a steel pick. You don't have to get the steel axe or the steel in, or steel of any of this other stuff. Because once you reach to level 3, you can pretty much skip right into Platinum and get Platinum. Normally this costs 12 Platinum ingots, but due to my talents, it only costs 6. So that's one of the reasons why we recommend uh, investing in tools. Because this will make access 25% uh, cost less. And where's. And right here we'll make it another. This will make access 50% less. Which means you can then make a platinum axe for half the cost. And then we pretty much recommend getting extra space so you can get the stoking the flames and then get this. So this is part one of the survival guide. There will be more parts as we go along. This show is just uh, here to give you a, a helpful hint and to better surviving. If you want to know more about Icarus part two will talk about a little bit about the story behind it again this is just pretty much speculation and ideas and uh, theories so it's not a hundred percent accurate this so as we said so hopefully this will come in handy for those of you who are having trouble. For those of you who are experienced, well, we hope you uh, succeed. Anyways, for now, this is your EDA survival guide, Neko Knight, closing off. If you want to see more of the uh, uh, guides, Leave a comment or a review, and uh, make sure to uh, subscribe for more information. This is uh, the end of this part, so for now, I'll have to say goodbye, and see you next time.